Introduction to OpenSearch In this video, let's look at different fundamental concepts and entities with OpenSearch such as what is a document, how to logically group a bunch of documents, how to spread the bunch of documents in a distributed system such as OpenSearch, and how to run fast searches to search on those documents to bring relevant search results. Let's start with what a document is. A row in a table can be an open source document. A file in a file system can be an open source document. A log line from a log file can be an open source document. A document in open source is the most granular unit of the index data. So when you run a search asking for information, open search return relevant documents for your search. But you have the control to define what a document is in open search. Going back to the first example, a row being a document in open search, what about the other rows? The different rows in one table then becomes an index in OpenSearch. So index is a collection of documents in the same way a bunch of rows become a table in database. A database table has a schema. Similarly, all the documents in an OpenSearch index has a mapping which has a schema definition such as the field name, the field type, etc, etc. In this example, I have three documents, but what if you have 30 billion documents? You can still index the 30 billion documents or 300 billion documents or even more, but it has to be partitioned in some way given the scale. You can partition an open search index into multiple shards. Each shard is a Lucene index of its own. And each Lucene index is made up of what is called segments. And segments is where the actual index documents are stored. Segments are also the fundamental storage unit in Lucene. So when you run a search request against an index, the request fans out to all the shards of that index. Each shard, the Lucene index, executes the search operation and the results from all these Lucene indices are then merged before returning the results back to you. Shards can be placed on several open search nodes that act as a combined unit. Imagine you have three open search nodes. You can place one shard on each of the nodes and this is how open search becomes a distributed system. And for any distributed system, High availability and resiliency is key, and this is why we have Replica. This way you can tolerate node failures or node failure depending upon how you handle replication factor. Replica of each shard is placed on a different node and never on the same node because placing the primary shard and the replica on the same node defeats the purpose of uh, fault tolerance. An open such node that holds the shards and the replica, basically the data, they're called the data nodes. And then we have other types of nodes as well. We have the cluster manager and the cluster manager eligible nodes for cluster orchestration. These were formerly known as master nodes and master eligible nodes. And then we have also the ingest node, which is basically for transforming data before indexing the data. Coordinating nodes, as the name suggests, coordinating search and indexing requests. Imagine this to be some kind of a smart load balancer. Then we have the dynamic nodes, for example, dedicated machine learning nodes for hosting locally hosting models or dense models or sparse models. And then we have the warm nodes, basically storage dense device for data archival. Then the search nodes for running dedicated search operations. So you have this nice reader writer separation. The different nodes combined together makes an open search cluster. Remember that an open search node can play multiple roles. An open search node can be a data node, also an ingest node, and also a cluster manager node at the same, at the same time. However, for a production grade cluster, it is recommended that you have dedicated nodes playing dedicated roles. So different tasks are well defined and distributed, giving you an option to scale them independently. The data structure used by Lucene is called inverted index, and it looks something like this. We have the two sample documents here and we have the work list or the terms list as we call it on the doc ID list. The term beauty appears in both the documents, document 1 and 2, whereas the term I appears only on the first document. And the word beast appears only on the second document. The inverted index stores more than just the terms list and doc IDs list. So the inverted index stores the following things that you are going to see on the screen. Unlike a traditional database or a NoSQL engine, all fields in a document are indexed by default. So we have the term frequency, the term occurrence count in each document, document frequency, the document occurrence count for each of those terms, positions, because it is not just sufficient to know the occurrence count, but where in the document are these terms present. 
because without the positions you really cannot run phrase queries or exact match searches or proximity searches like near operator adjacent operator and also the fields that has these terms because you might also want to run field specific searches so to summarize an inverted index has terms dictionary a dictionary with all the unique terms in the index data then the posting list which is the information about each term and in which document they exist and where in the document so think of it like this terms dictionary is about what words are searchable and posting list is about where to find each of these words and then we have the doc values a different type of data structure that complements the inverted index it's a columnar data structure designed for running sort queries and aggregation queries not really related to relevancy per se but i just wanted to introduce this to you for our later videos so to explain it with some examples let's take the two same sample documents that we used in the past so we have the terms list the unique terms list uh, and then we have the document frequency so basically beauty ap appears in both the documents the document frequency is 2 the word beast appears in only one document so the document frequency is 1 so you get the idea and then we have the posting list Posting list tells us everything about where and how these terms appear in the document. Let's take these two terms for example, beauty and beast. Beauty appears in document 1, only one time at the 0 position. Also appear at the, in the document 2, appears only one time at the same position. The term beast only appears in the second document, also only one time, but it appears at the third index. Once again, this is important because we want to run phrase queries, exact match searches, proximity searches. So what do we do with all the term frequency and the document frequency and the other information captured by the inverted index? It's all about scoring. For relevancy or scoring the results, you can use TFIDF, the term frequency and the inverse document frequency. But there are also some shortcomings with it. What if you search for the term open search in a dataset about open search? Then the term frequency for the term open search is going to be extremely high. Or what if you have two different PDF files about open search? One PDF file is just one page, the other PDF file is about 100 pages. Then it becomes an unfair competition because the 100 page PDF file has a much higher chance of having the search term in it multiple times than the one page PDF file. So you need to normalize both the term frequency. On the document length which is basically what the bm25 addresses bm25 stands for best match 25 and it is the default similarity model in open search on the top what you see is the bm 25s formula if you are interested but the important thing to note here is uh, open search lets you tune the k1 which is the term frequency saturation and b the document length normalization you can of course use the classic tf idf or boolean or even a custom script of similarity instead of pm25 note that this is the relevancy algorithm for lexical search as kn and vector search has its own scoring mechanism in this video we went over some of the fundamental concepts of open search or right from what a document is how they are distributed the data structure in which they are stored and how document scoring is done for relevancy Relevancy is key for several search use cases that we saw in the previous Getting Started with Open Search video. I'll see you in the next one.